Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we'll be talking about two large storm systems that will be bringing both heavy snow, heavy rain, severe weather in this upcoming week. So individually, these systems aren't really anything um, that I would call massive or huge. However, they uh, will be occurring in very short uh notices if you will i mean um there's gonna be one after the other following very quickly in his footsteps and even after these two there looks as if there could be just a continued chain however just for the sake of this video so i don't get too overextended with the forecast i will focus on just these two um snowstorms winter storms and uh, i'll be dividing this video into the regions just like i do with most of my videos okay so i'm gonna start off with talking about the northwestern united states and uh obviously skip to your region where you see the scroll bar the chapters you could also go to the description box below those will also tell you <clears throat> what second to go you can actually click on that little blue number um, and that will skip you to your region so let's start off with the northwestern United States and you know, sorry meant to click right here and start off with the GFS model global forecasting system so the Northwest uh, much like the Southwest has been kind of repeatedly hit with many many large systems in the past again these systems are very large very um, uh, incredible systems and do note that um, Right now, there is activity going on. Uh, obviously, the further east you go into Montana, Wyoming, areas, um, you know, especially eastern areas of those states haven't really been dealing with too much precipitation, which is a huge contrast compared to the coastal areas of the northwest and southwestern Canada there. Do note that there will be areas of, uh, several areas of pockets of activity as we push this into the week. Notice that there's some across um, Idaho right there into Montana, one across Wyoming, Montana going on um, in the into the daytime tomorrow. But no, more noticeably, across Nevada, Utah, and northern Wyoming, there's going to be, sorry, southern Wyoming and northern Colorado, there's going to be an area of uh, pretty heavy snow as you get into the day on Tuesday and into Wednesday. Do note, though, that as we get into early Wednesday, the day uh, we see another system slams into British Columbia and the coastal areas of the northwest, while we, while we still have quite a bit of snow occurring across Wyoming from a winter storm that will be spreading, winter storm that will be spreading out into the um, uh, eastern United States. So, um, while, you know, again, there's many areas to track, so there's going to be a little bit of an area in between these two systems you can see the day late thursday into sorry late wednesday into early thursday a little bit of dry time for idaho wyoming montana but it's already snowing across uh, oregon uh, seattle washington portland northern california nevada and you can see that system kind of dives towards the south and east so areas like montana wyoming you guys don't really get in on that snow from that system however the precipitation doesn't necessarily stop maybe the intensity of the storms will um you know tone down a bit compared to what we have been seeing but notice saturday of the this upcoming week more snow showers and then into tuesday another chance especially further east into montana idaho so the main forecast message is a continued active pattern i would not say it's going to be as active uh, as active especially for the coastal areas as what we have been seeing i mean quite truly uh this thing uh, has been incredible right this pattern that we've been dealing with so anything that is compared to it will seem rather lackluster but again a, a completely quiet pattern will not be taking shape another area or another thing i want to note for you guys uh, across the northwest here is that it will be getting a lot colder or at least more normal it's been pretty warm um, especially if you go towards the eastern part of this, or the west, um, the western areas got a little bit more of that cool air as the systems rode in. But you notice that as I play this through Tuesday now, right of this week, Wednesday, we see more of these blue colors filling in, less of those orange colors, and that will be the trend continuing. Now we don't anticipate any massive cold blast immediately in the near term. That, that could happen eventually, but you could see the GFS really favoring more cold than warm, especially across the U.S. Canada, if you live in across Alberta, British Columbia there, and Saskatchewan, maybe a bit more warmth, you can see right there, but predominantly the West staying cool here towards the U.S. Again, the warmth secluded towards the, the prairies of Canada, and again, it's questionable how warm that will be, so really quite astonishing. You can see how, how chilly it may remain, and uh, there's a few reasons for that. The pattern won't be bringing in air off the Pacific Ocean anymore, um, and also just the incredible amount of snow that is on the ground will be very hard for areas to warm up. Again, snow is very reflective, so the, the soil, the earth it doesn't really keep any of the, uh, the sun's heat it just kind of rebounds it back into the atmosphere so that's definitely you're uh, definitely playing a role and you can see some of these temperatures will definitely it will definitely be chillier than uh, normal so that is another thing i wanted to address for the northwest overall though um again continued activity for the northwest 
with this pattern southwest likewise um again you guys are coming out of a pattern that's really you know historic i mean it doesn't really happen often when we, where we see this type of stuff especially in a la nina pattern notice that right now we're already seeing the impacts of a system that is going to be the first one that, of the two that i'm talking about you can see there it is intensifying some of the snowfall rates getting really heavy into tomorrow across the sierra continued snow across arizona nevada pretty much all states across the southwest getting impacted by this heavy snow mounts into the colorado rockies the wasatch uh, northern arizona Arizona, northern New Mexico, really seeing quite a bit of snow, and then you can see the system uh, eventually hits areas like near Denver and pivots out of there into Nebraska, northern Kansas, and it's out of here. However, that's not it for the southwest. Um, notice that by the time this is again Wednesday, the coastal areas are done with the first storm, but a second one starts rolling in late Wednesday, early Thursday. The eastern areas here across Utah, Colorado, you guys are still dry for late Thursday, sorry, early Thursday, but by late Thursday, we see another system moving in. Noticeably smaller and weaker, though you can see there's a lot of cold there, so the snow doesn't have a problem falling across vast areas just a few areas that actually do see rain mostly snow and then that one evolves into a pretty strong system across the plains but doesn't really do too much across the southwest itself so it may not seem significant here but if you were to look on a map the overall united states map <clears throat> you would realize that that system evolves into a very large system um obviously behind that you know the, the pattern does quiet down but it's not completely quiet you can see continuous snow showers into next week and again notice no map monsters moving in from the coast of California, so that's definitely going to be, um, or sorry, from the Pacific into the coast of California, like we've been seeing for the past half month, there still will be some snow and, uh, you know, showers and whatnot, but again, nothing compared to what we have been seeing, and the precipitation amounts will be drastically falling, um, and you can see this is just what could be additionally ex uh, expected, and the bulk of this will be falling in the next uh, two to three days, so that's good news um obviously you know snow rain we want that but it's just a little bit too much now so let's let's have the areas here soaking your all that precipitation or you know recover from all that stuff that's been going on there let's move on to the north central united states so this is an area that is going to really start kicking up its activity this area has seen some activity obviously there was you know recently a big snow storm across uh, the plains quite a bit of severe weather towards the south but it will continue and the warmth will be there but it just won't be as prevalent and far-reaching as it has been in the past half month so again if you watch yesterday's videos i was warning about how there will be there will be a um <clears throat> there will be a massive um a, a massive pattern change and i still believe that is the case uh, the models continue supporting that and do note that what we do see is pretty much instantly tomorrow already the first of the two systems i'm talking about again look how warm it's going to be i mean the temperatures are warm enough for rain to be occurring across minnesota northern michigan uh, into even southern canada the snow just far reaching across the dakotas it won't be heavy however some areas could still pick up three to six uh seven inches which you know for those areas isn't really that bad um considering some of the snowfall events we saw earlier this year and do note that this thing isn't really too terribly strong it's pretty uh, you know large in terms of its uh, impacts um and uh, again many cities getting impacted but the individual impacts are going to be rather rather small but do note that you know there could be some rain could be some snow and uh, this moves out of most of the north central united states by late tuesday Day. so again predominantly monday and tuesday for these areas before we have the next new system moving in which will be more, more significant total accumulated precip you could still see there still will be areas that pick up some noticeable amounts total snowfall also nothing too incredible though there will be some snow um looking at the european model line you can see that there are some differences european model a little bit more intense with potentially some of that um those thunderstorms maybe that rainfall again though um nothing really incredibly different from the gfs just some small differences you can see staying pretty light with those precipitation amounts um again most areas not getting anywhere above um you know half an inch of uh, precipitation and if you were to take a look at the total snowfall for the north central united states assuming a 10 to 1 ratio again nothing too incredible some areas picking up two three there could be a few pockets that pick up a bit more of that snowfall notice nebraska kansas colorado these areas are going to be dealing with a new system that's going to be coming in so that's not part of this one um let's go back now and start showing you that that second system because this is just the first one so let's go back to the gfs and you can see that again as i mentioned right on the heels of that one we have a system that's a lot stronger a lot more potent could potentially de deliver some severe weather or just thunderstorms and heavy rain across kentucky indiana ohio west virginia but you can see snow further east or west and again where exactly this rain snow line sets up is still a little a little bit of a question mark they'll notice iowa minnesota nebraska south dakota wisconsin northern illinois potentially seeing uh, a good snowfall 
all potential. We'll have to wait and see. I'll show you the European, which shows a slightly different scenario, though you can see heavy snow wherever it does fall, it will be heavy. And while it's not absolutely massive, right, it's not um, incredibly expansive, this system, you can see that there still will be a slot of very heavy, obviously, snow. The rain, not too massive, and the low uh, millibars on this thing aren't really too low either. So the impacts will be there, especially considering, you know, on the heels of another system. Um, so again, this just takes us through Friday. But the more noticeable thing is for many, uh, this will leave a lot more cooler air in place compared to what we've been seeing, which will set the stage for the next systems coming in. Do note that the total snowfall from this, wherever it does occur, again, as I mentioned, could be pretty significant. There could be widespread swath of 6 to 10 inches. Again, where this is, where this exactly lines up is still a little bit of a question mark, to say the least. Total accumulated precipitation, you could see from both of those systems on top of each other, uh, the precip amounts could be um, quite substantial. So that's definitely something to note as well. Obviously, as I also hinted at, there will be cooler temperatures behind this system. Maybe not necessarily cold for January, but definitely colder compared to what we've been seeing, so that's already going to be noticeable. And then with each passing system, there will be more and more cool air, and uh, you can see that eventually we see more cool air uh, make its way in there uh, across the Midwest, or at least, you know, at least periodically visit these areas. And again, because there's going to be constant storms out ahead of each one, there will be some warm-up, so changeable, but um, chaotic. So stay tuned for that. Uh, European model, let's quickly show you what this one shows for the North Central United States. Again, may seem kind of useless just to show you the difference between two models but sometimes again you know that's a whole difference of uh, uh, completely different from your uh, perspective of wherever you are so again that's the first system from the european i already showed you that do notice there's that second one european again just like the gfs shows it stronger again you can see the rain snow line is further north with the european still though areas that do end up seeing the snow is uh you know are going to be seeing a lot of it notice kansas missouri illinois indiana you got you guys are going to be seeing a lot of rain potentially some nasty thunderstorms even as far north as southern illinois um again with that last system and not uh, i think a week ago we saw some tornadoes even in illinois northern illinois so that was um yeah i saw a thunderstorm so you know some of these systems have been rather incredible with how they've uh, kind of reacted uh, with to this warm air so definitely oops sorry definitely wouldn't be surprised to see some far-reaching severe weather again though you can see it's not an incredible system uh, it's definitely a powerful one though nonetheless and do note that in total precipitation amounts the european just like the gfs pretty similar showing widespread amounts of you know half an inch to an inch maybe some areas seeing two inches where that heavy rain sets up across ohio valley total snowfall you can see the european also showing quite a bit of that snowfall let's move on now towards the um south central united states this is an area that is also going to be um, impacted by numerous systems these two systems first one not as much as the second one notice the first one's already kind of moving out onto the plains as i pretty much upload this video but impacts are minimal uh, besides from some strong winds from the south producing warm temperatures for these areas today uh, there's going to be a few showers across missouri kansas uh, illinois and um, again nothing too incredibly strong a little bit of thunderstorm activity towards the south here into the day on monday and late tuesday but then it's out of here and you may think, wow, that's the system. Yeah, the first one really won't impact your region specifically too much. However, notice we have another one moving in through the Rockies there and into the Dakotas. Sorry, not Dakotas. You're into Colorado. Denver will be seeing quite a bit of snow out of this into um, <clears throat> into Kansas, into, uh, again, uh, Oklahoma, Texas. You guys will be seeing rain out of this. No snow, but notice northern Te Kansas could be seeing some snow. And again, those areas are pretty dry, so some of this rain would be very needed. And on Wednesday, there, a severe weather threat could be setting up across again arkansas missouri nothing looks as if it will be incredible you know a devastating severe weather event but definitely something to keep an eye on for and notice that some of those areas do get pretty yellow in coloration indicating uh, some stronger thunderstorms and notice the thing this thing lifts out of here by a thursday and what we are left in its wake is some cooler air and potentially some uh, again the next system following that which again the pattern will stay active could take advantage of that cooler air and potentially leave more of a uh will lead to more of a snowier pattern across some of these areas because of that cooler air. So we'll have to wait and see. Again, activity um, will not be, let's just say it won't be, um, it won't be in a shortage of uh, across the South Central United States. And actually, if I go to the Storm Prediction Center, I can show you that on Wednesday, they do have a severe weather threat, again, across Louisiana, Texas, and Mississippi there. So that's definitely something we'll have to watch for. Let me show you now portions of the Northeast. As again, you guys will be impacted by kind of three systems, actually. There's one impacting you right now, and it's delivering some snow across extreme coastal areas of the Northeast, Maine, New Hampshire, um, uh, Vermont, not really Vermont, sorry, Massachusetts, Connecticut, extreme uh, eastern... 
points of Rhode I um, Long Island, and you can see that it's a pretty strong system, but it's kind of off sharp, far off the coast, so the impacts are going to be more limited. But for the next few hours, you can see some snow and rain and stuff will be pivoting into the kind of the northeast, and that will be impacting again some of the extremely coastal areas here with some snow and rain and ice. But do note that we do have that new system moving in, so it kind of moves that uh, that old one out of the way. This one again, not incredible. It's going to produce a little bit of rain across West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Yeah, no snow for you guys. A little bit of ice maybe and snow towards upstate New York there into southeastern Canada. But overall, nothing really incredible from this uh, first one or second one in your case across the northeast. The second one or the third one will be a little bit more impactful. You can see some heavier rain colors across the mid-Atlantic here into Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania. Again, not really a really snow event for you guys for the most part. They'll notice northern Michigan into southeastern Canada, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine picking up a little bit of snow. And again, we'll have to wait and see how that one evolves. It leaves a lot more colder air in its wake, so additional systems following that could lead to a bit more snow. Again, I'm just kind of running through these models. It all depends on the model perspective and uh, really anything behind outside of like 150 hours is kind of a little useless to look at and, you know, try to investigate. So let's take a look at the European. Again, there's that ongoing system. We'll be dropping a little bit of snow and rain and, um, you know, your ice potentially across the northeast and southeastern Canada areas. Do note we have that second system moving in just a few days later on the day Tuesday and into Wednesday. Again, nothing really remarkable. And then that third one, which will be affecting the northeast, you can see according to the European with a thud of snow potentially for some areas, especially across Vermont, New Hampshire, rain pretty much elsewhere south of those areas and then uh, snow into potentially southeastern Canada at least initially the European does try intensifying a storm out of this you could see a secondary low pressure so that could lead to some enhanced snow off Maine maybe into Vermont again um, though it moves out of here pretty quickly and stably uh, you can see in the European and long range does introduce more systems that are potentially more coastal so again don't um, again this pattern is going to be a lot more active than what we've been seeing with uh, many more chances for snow so don't lose your um, expectations or don't you know don't become hopeless in that sense. Uh, so let's take a glance now at that snowfall accumulation from the European perspective. Again, slightly different from the uh, from the GFS. It shows a bit more snow, obviously. Um, you can see even some decent amounts with the ongoing storm, maybe some areas totaling six inches, uh, maybe even more. But with that, again, with that second one, not really anything too incredible with additional snowfall amounts. And sorry, that's the first one. There's a second one. You can see the second one is footprint right there so a little bit of snow off the lakes maybe and then there's that third one which again could produce some decent snow especially across maine and, and kind of vermont new hampshire northern areas of those states and southeastern canada and then you can see in the long range potentially some more storms so we'll have to wait and see as uh, boring as that sounds um Let's move on to the southeastern United States, another area that will be impacted by numerous systems. Um, again, no snow for you guys, at least not in uh, at least in the short term. You guys will be predominantly dealing with uh, just just rain, and you can see that on to Monday, Tuesday, there's your first threat across the southeast. Generally, um, by Wednesday, it's pretty much out of here. Notice the GFS introduces a stronger system, which is more concerning. Could drop some severe weather across Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, pretty much the western areas of the southeast, if you will, into the day on Wednesday and Thursday. As this cold front races through the southeast there will be additional storms really though it will be weakening and um you know the severe weather threat is pretty much non-existent once it reaches uh, you know georgia the carolinas the panhandle florida and alabama into today on uh, thursday what we will be left in its wake is uh some cooler air i'm still probably running a bit above average just not uh, as above average and you can see that secondary systems or sorry later on systems do end up uh kind of veering towards more towards the south as there are more there's more kind of cold air pushing in from the north so some of that could also be producing some severe weather, heavy rainfall, and uh, again, in the long range, the southeast, you guys look very, very active with a very uh, turbulent um, future in terms of the weather. Um, and again, there could be some snow chances for certain areas, depending on how the pattern all unfolds in terms of the total precipitation it will be pretty significant total accumulated precip you could see several areas picking up potentially several several inches of rainfall um and it's been overall pretty pretty active winter in terms of the rain for the southeast there but do note that um in terms of temperatures as again as i've been saying it's gonna start off pretty warm for now i do know florida is exceptionally cool right now i saw some frost advisories there but that's gonna move out of there pretty quickly um by pretty much monday tuesday it's out of there and again we have a lot of warm temperatures moving in potentially some record highs being broken uh, across these areas do note that the gfs introduces some uh, temperatures that are you know I mean spring like and you may maybe some areas will even get the spring fever people wanting to plan outside
that and whatnot. But again, uh, you know, winter's not over. It's just January. Um, it, knowing winter will probably extend way into April. And do note that um, while we do still see overall a warmer pattern, especially since these systems won't be really moving south of the uh, southeast, but north, so the warmer they bring up kind of overrides these areas. You can see some of that cooler air mixing in here um, and at least providing more normal temperatures. And towards the long range, again, there could be some more significant cool air. And speaking of the long range, I kind of want to just give you guys the overall look of the United States. Again, as I've been saying, the pattern looks active regardless of what, what which way you put it and what area you live in. You can see there's multiple storms. Again, uh, the Pacific, you guys will be quieter, um, you know, the Pacific West, but uh, you can see storm after storm, many cities uh, reintroduced with a lot of cold, a lot of snow, different snow chances, uh, and you know, the, your, the GFS has been consistent with this for several days. Yesterday's model run 24 hours ago showed... Again, storm after storm. There's really no signs that this will be stopping. Again, we could be stuck in an extended, um, <clears throat> extended period of activity, and you can see... There's one uh, that we you know the two we we're talking about early next week. There could be several more. You can see that pattern. We have a little disturbance coming in off Canada, meets with the Gulf of Mexico here, and boom, it explodes. Not necessarily again introducing all that warm air across the United States, but more cool air from Canada, allowing well a lot of these systems to be a lot more snow filled than typically. So if you look at some of these temperature anomalies, again in the short term, still that Pacific pattern lingering, but in the long range, we see those cooler temperatures um, starting to take hold. For the majority, um, not everyone obviously, and there still will be pockets, brief areas of, of warmer weather, but overall a cooler pattern. Notice that if you look at the GEFS ensemble, so this is many models combined to look at an average look. I often use this in the short term again, pretty warm, but as you push this towards you know, the, the further range into 384 hours, Plus, we start getting uh, a lot of more substantial cool weather uh, moving in, and uh, that seems to be the trend. If you take a look at uh, a, uh, a uh, outlook that goes out to 576 hours, so let's speed this up again. We see the warmth um, still kind of remaining from this old pattern, but we see again more cool air moving in, and this is now into late January, We're now into early February, and you can see that, uh, again, warmth may again be stubborn across the south and east here, but pretty... Pretty persistent towards the north and west, um, and uh, again, the models have been pretty pretty consistent with regards to showing that. So we'll have to wait and see. But for now, that's basically it, guys. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya. Bye.